Okay. Okay. So um, I think we'll get started. Whoever trickles in, you know, we'll we'll kind of um, kind of go with that. But um, I think let's just kind of start the session by um, introducing yourselves. Now, all of you that are on, kind of on you're actually projected on the screen here behind me. But uh, why don't you all, you know, um, whoever's available to talk, I guess, you know, just kind of tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, you know what brought you here, what made you interested in real estate. So we'll start with Randy again. I know you introduced yourself a little bit, but I'm give you <laughs> All right. yeah, my name is Randy Kincaid. Uh, I'm a retired educator, uh, and I have been uh, a real estate investor uh, probably thirty plus years. But I, keep the door open just I went with the uh, you know the single unit, uh, single family home, small apartment complexes. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, I just got kind of tired of, or I am tired of being a landlord. And so I'm just more interested in finding, uh, new options. Um, but I do love real estate. So that's why I, I understand real estate a whole lot better than I understand the stock market. So that's pretty much why I'm here. Excellent. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for being here tonight. So um how about um i guess jillian why don't you introduce yourself my name is jillian uh i am one of uh, dr nathania's former residents graduated in 2019. my real estate interest i own a house for a very short time when i lived in michigan and i enjoyed the opportunity to get to know a little bit about real estate there uh, my brother is a real estate investor and he's gone through the ups and downs of uh, what that could look like from both an active standpoint and a passive standpoint. And being an early career physician, um, I like to know the options that are available with a lower income and then as we grow. Uh, I'm interested in both passive and inactive. Um, my vision for acting is short-term rentals for patients that need a home away from home. Uh, I work for MD Anderson and I have encountered a lot of patients that work in my, uh, live in my community and they are here for six to seven weeks for the radiation. And I want to be a place and create a home for people um, that, that helps that time be better for them. So those are my real estate visions. All right. Yeah, and actually, I you know I know I'm passively invested in a uh, in a deal close by where you're at. She's at she she works for MD Anderson in Houston. So, um, so um, but yeah, she was here with us for a little while. So thanks for sharing. So uh, Chris Chris said that his audio is not working. So uh, I know Manish is joining us from New Jersey. I don't know if he's in any position to talk right now. Introduce himself. And if not, you're just listening in. That's cool. I'll just pass the mic around to our folks that are here locally. So, Manish, yep. Yeah, Joel, can you hear me? Yep, could hear you now. Yeah. Hey, I'm sorry. I'm I'm in uh, at my kids' class, so my camera is not on. Um, uh, yeah, myself, uh, Manish Chamoli, just like uh, Joel. So, like, I live in uh, New Jersey, and me and Joel, we both have the part of the. Uh, same uh, some rock group. Um, so yeah, my real estate journey started like in 2016. I own some single families and condos. Um, um, I started selling them once I get into the got into the multifamily in 2000, late 2019 and early 2020. Uh, so so far I've done like uh, 10 plus uh, passive investing um, and own a, a very small multifamily. Um, and yeah, looking towards to uh, basically do the active deals on the multifamily. On my day job, basically, I'm I'm a software engineer. As software engineer, I work as a director IT in one of the healthcare companies. Yeah, I know you guys can probably hear. I know it's a, we're kind of a little bit loud bar here, but uh, appreciate you kind of introducing yourself here. So um, Ari, right? Or, or Ty, 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 that's right, that's right. Um, I'm kind of going to kind of go around the room, kind of introduce ourselves. We got people both, people from Houston, people from New Jersey, people that are local. So um, kind of pass the mic around. 
Why don't you all introduce yourselves? Tell us about yourself. I feel like I need to stand in front of the camera. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, everybody. My name is Estevan. I am a local real estate agent here, a commercial real estate agent, uh, primor primarily focused on multifamilies. Uh, so, yeah, it's great to be here. Um, as far as investing, I do, uh, we do invest a bit more short term rentals. Uh, so, that's kind of what our niche is right now. I uh, would like to get into like bigger multifamily stuff, but yeah, I'm a broker and an investor. So if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. My name is Adam Casalino. Where am I? Oh, 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 you did. Oh, you, oh, you switched it. Oh, okay. Uh, my name is Adam Cosolino. I'm an entrepreneur. Uh, I currently own a Smoothie King uh, in Hickory, North Carolina. Um, I've done some other stuff. I dove into real estate uh, a couple of years ago with my brother while he was uh, doing some real estate investing. Last year, I actually uh, purchased a home in New York and I flipped it. Um, it took forever. I'll probably never do a real estate in uh, as Stefan probably knows about New York um, and all of that um, mess that it is, but uh, but yeah, so uh, that's kind of why I'm here. Um, I'm very interested in the local market and everywhere else and um, you know, other investments as well. Hi, I'm Haley Thatcher, one of Dr. Nepenius' oral medicine residents. And uh, I'm very novice here. You know, my brother works in uh, real estate. He is in a a software firm Compass. And so like, he kind of got me interested at first. And my grandmother was in real estate um, in Jacksonville, where I'm from. And so I just kind of want some more ideas to have like passive income. And Dr. Nepenius kind of chatted with me earlier about like crowdfunding and syndications. And so I just want to, you know, get to know more about real estate just in general and kind of um, broaden my horizon a little bit in terms of income. Hey guys, Ty Volcanis. Um, interesting dynamic between the live and, and, and online, right? Yeah, cool. I kind of like it. Um, uh, I have been doing real estate for a little over 20 years. Um, primarily uh, started out single family, got into some small development projects, and uh, we've done, we're kind of working on our ninth one right now. Uh, we're, we just closed on a 30 unit apartment building in uptown Charlotte. And uh, we're finishing out our raise. If anybody's interested in a limited partnership position on that, I'd love to build a relationship. It's a 506B, which is sophisticated and um, accredited in investors. So uh, would like to build a relationship with anybody interested in those. We're active in the market. Um, I Military took me out of Charlotte like 33 years ago. Um, I've been in San Diego, California, was in the SEAL teams for about 11 years, got out, was a cop for a few years, realized I didn't want to be a cop forever and started my own business doing some real estate stuff. And then it, it, it's been over 20 years now. So that's kind of the story on me. Uh, I look forward to uh, the group tonight um, and uh, still a little early over here. So I think we got a few more people coming. In fact, I talked to uh, uh, Gonzalo and, and some of those guys. So, on his way. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you being here. I know he's, this man's got a lot of experience, has done a lot. So um, certainly he's a great resource. You know, we'll make sure that we uh, exchange information, you know, uh, make the information available for everybody um, so you can contact them. Um, Federico, I think you're joining us. I don't know if you're in a position to talk. Hello. Yeah, we can hear you. Yes. Hi, Joel. Yeah, this is Federico from... Seattle area, and uh, yeah, it's pleasant to meet you all. Started with the multifamily investing that was last year by joining the Jake and Gino program. Mm, was able to uh, partner up on a JB. Well, initially I was looking for for deals down in North Carolina, and uh, yeah, did not pan out. But uh, end up uh, joining some JB in Oklahoma and uh, Virginia, so. That's where I am and um, yeah, looking for some, I'm still interested in North Carolina. That's why I'm trying to join the community. 
Mm, yep. I am my day job. I'm uh, I'm in the medical field, registered nurse, and um, hopefully trying to <clears throat> be more uh, increase my passive income and uh, work this uh, real estate full time. Hopefully, <laughs> have a great day. Thank you. Well, thank, appreciate you joining us from the West Coast here. So we got Houston, we got New Jersey, um, we got, what was it, Belmont, you know, and we got Charlotte kind of represented here. So um, you, you don't want to talk? Okay, that's all right. So um, I, I guess what I'll do is I'll kind of give my little spiel, um, you know, since this is about time, be respectful for all your time. And then, you know, we can kind of open it up talk to like more experienced folks like Ty or, uh, you know, talk from the broker standpoint from, uh, you know, with Esteban or, you know, in terms of uh, just general questions, Q and A. So what I wanted to cover today was, um, let me just kind of put this, put this mic on and I'll share my screen. But you can, you can all hear us pretty well, all of you that are online, correct? Okay. So let me just go ahead and share my screen here. Uh, trying to figure out where the, where's the share screen option? Oh, there it is. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. So what I want to do is kind of just talk a little bit about, you know, the criteria that I go through. And, and kind of the steps that I go through in terms of uh, uh, choosing, a, choosing a market. Um, actually, hold on. For some reason, my, my Zoom folks are seeing my preview screen. And what I want them to do is actually see the, the slideshow. There we go. Let's see. Hold on a sec, just trying to get the right. Hold on. So what I'm trying to do is get uh, what we can see. So bear with me here, this new concept. Well, you know what? I'm just going to kind of show it. You can kind of see the behind the scenes, all you people in Zoom. So, okay. Uh, let's, actually let's try good. this again. All right. What you all see in all of you in Cyberland, what you all see in kind of the, the screen that's got both this, both the main screen and also the next, next, um, you know, next slide. What, everybody seeing that okay? Yes. Okay. Or you can do the presenters by the bottom. Yeah, for some reason I'm trying to get the, the full oh. screen here. So, so what I want to do is kind of go over, and I, I know Ty can kind of weigh in, and everybody else can kind of um, go over what their criteria is. I just kind of wanted to go over what, what my criteria is. And, um, you know, and, and it really I'm just kind of – I do this for every property that I look at, whether it's a um, – single family, short-term rental, whether it's a, um, you know, one of our small multifamily or whether it's an apartment that we're looking to, uh, to syndicate or, you know, right now we're looking at a mixed, um, you know, there's a couple that we're looking at, one's mixed use property. Um, so, but I, I kind of apply the same thing, although you can probably, um, uh, you know, apply this mostly to multifamily, but, you know, I think folks like Ty can kind of weigh in and see what, um, kind of give us their insights. So I know all of you heard a little bit about me. Everybody knows me, you know, so I'm not gonna spend too much time. You know, I'm a full-time academic dentist. I actually, our office is just right behind this place. Um, but, uh, you know, I do have a family, family of, uh, of uh, five total. My wife, Winnie has been kind of the full-time real estate professional managing our properties um, while also raising the kids. So 
Um, so she really has two jobs while I only have one. And so, uh, so it's much more, you know. So I think the one thing though, is that, you know, I love what I do. I love training residents just like Jillian, just like, uh, just like uh, Dr. Batcher over here. Um, but, you know, you can love something, but imagine if your favorite food was like prime rib and you got to eat it every single day, every single day, every single meal, five days a week for the next 20 years, kind of gets old. So, um, you know, so for that reason, you know, you kind of feel like you're kind of handcuffed to your job and you're doing it out of necessity. Um, and so for that reason, that's why, you know, we kind of looked into investing into real estate. And this is our big why. So in order for us to, um, to invest in, you know, to, to get my job, which, you know, I'm kind of handcuffed. I love training folks like Dr. Vatcher over here. Um, we have to go, we have to get away from our family over here. So uh, they're up in Canada. I only get to see them two or three times a year, you know, because I'm tied to this job. We had to move all the way down here. Um, so not, there's not one day kind of comes by where I'm not sad that I'm not, I'm, you know, that we don't get to see them more often. So especially with the pandemic, haven't seen them over the last, um, you know, for the last three years, I saw them once, you know, came back because my mother was hospitalized uh, in December. So we started investing, kind of did some, you know, bought some um, small multifamily. This is a quadplex in Tampa. This is how it looked like when we bought it. And this is how it looked like when we renovated it. Um, so it was, you know, quite, a, you know, it was quite an interesting journey to get to that point. We bought it right at, right in April of 2020, closed on it right at the height of the pandemic. Um, had, you know, uh, our renovation costs ended up, you know, being twice as much as we anticipated it. Uh, the neighborhood um, was one that was crime filled with uh, drug dealers, uh, but it was, a, it was an area that was really hot in Tampa. So, um, so we saw the opportunity there. The interesting thing is now we've pretty much almost doubled the rents since the two years that we have acquired it. Uh, and, the, and houses in the neighborhood are just being flipped at a, um, flipped at a rate. That's, um, uh, you know, they're being bought and they're being sold 100,000 more than uh, what they're being purchased for. So kind of want to talk about different ways to invest. Um, we got, you know, um, you can either directly own by yourself. You can either joint venture partner with somebody else. Um, I know you've, you know, you've directly owned or you can syndicate uh, just like uh, Gonzalo here who just walked in and Ty uh, in which you're a general partner in which you're active, uh, but you have a bunch of limited partners that are investing alongside with you to participate on the upside of it. So um, we kind of want to talk about um, I know this is apartment investing group, um, but just kind of want to talk about the benefits of uh, being a being a, a, a both a limited partner and a general partner. So, kind of want to spend a few minutes talk about what are the criteria in terms of choosing a market and what is it choosing a neighborhood. And I'm actually ripping this from uh, another well-known syndicator, but I I do this for every single property that I look at. And you know, Gonzalo and Ty, you can always chime in at chime in at the end in terms of, you know, what your, what your feedback is. So, you know, how do you know that, you know, people are, you know, I've had people kind of talk to me and say, you know, this is a risky, risky thing, you know, investing in real estate and, you know, putting your money in, what if you lose all your money? And so what are the things that we do to, in order to mitigate risk? And so you want to invest in markets where it's probably going to be um, most favorable for you. Um, so, Number one thing is you want to invest in a city when you're choosing a city uh, in terms of population growth. Um, so, you know, if it's a city that's smaller, you actually want to have greater population growth. Um, so less than 250,000 in the metro area, you want to have one, one and a half percent annual growth. 250,000 to a million, you want about a 1.25 percent annual growth. Um, and a city that's greater than a million, you know, like in New York's you know, well, you know, um, LA's, you know, things like that. You want to see that people are moving into the city and that you're going to have a solid, you know, solid um, influx of a tenant base um, and business um, to kind of support that. So, so that's number one, um, number one thing. So I wanted to apply it to, you know, our city right here and versus a place like Detroit, Michigan. Um, so when you look at Charlotte, you know, and this is taken straight from city data where I, where I look at, 
um, and they can kind of weigh in as to what other sources they look at. Uh, you know, Charlotte kind of hits it out of the park. You know, uh, population change since um, the year 2000, you know, we've had a 63.8%, whereas Detroit, Michigan is kind of like a negative 30% uh, population growth. So um, could you make money investing in Detroit? Sure. But, you know, are, is it a more risky proposition? Absolutely. Where you want to kind of invest in a place like here, um, where, you know, you certainly are having, uh, you know, a phenomenal growth. So another place to look at, you know, macro trends, um, you know, you kind of want to look at the cities by population and they'll kind of give you, um, you know, the rankings in terms of the top 10 cities by population and also uh, the historical numbers. So when we're talking about, you know, a city of greater than a million or a metropolitan area that's greater than a million with, um, you want to have one point, you know, 1% annual growth compounded. Um, city data publishes data, publishes the 2000 population, but also publishes the 2019 population. Um, and so you're looking for roughly about 15% growth uh, in that city. So examples of that, Phoenix. Uh, Phoenix has 27.2% uh, population in that time span. San Antonio, 35%. Dallas Metro, about 55% growth in that time span between year 2000 and year 2019. Whereas a place like Chicago has had a negative 7.7% growth. Um, so um, even though everybody loves Chicago, it's one of my favorite cities in the world. Um, I usually get into trouble over there. Um, great place to eat, great place to drink. Uh, maybe not, not a good place to invest in, you know, or, or at least that's just one factor. Detroit Metro has gone down negative 10%. So over the last 20 years. Now, you know, smaller cities, less than a million out, you know, um, and, you know, Charlotte proper, I know Charlotte as a metro is greater than a million, but Charlotte as a city kind of fits in this criteria, 1.25% annual growth. Um, you know, you're looking at about 22% growth between when you look at city data between 2000 and 2019. So Charlotte definitely fits that bill. Jacksonville fits that, Jacksonville, Florida fits that bill. Nashville Metro, I know Gonzalo has been looking at some places over there. Uh, Louisville, yeah, yeah. So um, whereas, you know, I use an example like Buffalo, which is probably the closest US city to where I live, um, has had negative 9%. Now I know people that have invested there and are doing really well. Uh, but again, you know, if you're looking to hedge your, you know, increase your likelihood of success, you wanna go to a place where people are, people are moving, so. Um, smaller cities, you know, your set, your tertiary markets, um, you definitely want to have larger uh, population growth. So 1.5% annually, um, which works out to about 33% growth. Um, so Greenville, South Carolina is just, you know, doubled that 74%. Um, Durham, rally Durham, I kind of lump into the other into the other group greater than a million, just be, but you know, as a city on its own, it's doing great. Greensboro's doing great. Um, I use Dayton, Ohio as an example, just because I spent my first year in residency there. Uh, made some good friends, great city, some neat places, the Oregon district, but you can see it's like negative 15.5% uh, population growth in that category. So people are moving away, so less renters. Second thing, you want medium household income growth. Um, so regardless of whether it's a small city or a large city, uh, you, want, you want about one and a half percent increase annually, greater than 30% growth for year 2000 to 2019. Um, so certainly Charlotte, Charlotte has fit that bill. Atlanta has really, um, you know, has really crushed it. Um, yeah, Detroit, you know, it still had some growth, but not quite, uh, not quite at that threshold there. So city number three, uh, focus number three, you want to look at, um, val you know, uh, median property value growth, house, condo value growth. Um, so it's like all markets, you want a 2% increase uh, cumulatively. So we're looking at about 40% growth um, from the year 2000 to 2019. So um, Charlotte, for instance, um, you know, essentially in the last 20 years is doubled. Although, you know, again, we're missing the 2020, 2021. So I would imagine that this is way over, way over 100%. Um, you know, Florida, 
um, where we have one of our properties has gone up 270%. Now, I know they, they really suffered through the downturn in 2008. Um, so it's, you know, it's just really volatile that way. Again, Detroit, I, I hate to pick on Detroit, but you can see that the value of properties there is negative, negative 6.3%. And then the last thing, you know, in city data, um, you know, you want to look at change in crime levels. So you certainly city data, if you're looking at it, the city um, generally has a crime index of um, you want something that's 500 or less. And it looks at a number of different factors uh, at the same time. Now, interestingly enough, Charlotte doesn't really have that data available. You know, you, you could see that like Orlando I've got up here. Um, and, you know, even if it's higher than 500, you know, you want something that you want to see that it's trending down, you know, that it's on the right, on the right track. Um, so Charlotte, we don't have data on Orlando as of 2019, it was 449. Uh, Detroit is up to 866. Again, picking on Detroit again. So, so, so and now. You, I, I just want to um, touch base since we're, we're still seeing your slide one. You're still seeing slide one? Mm -hmm. We're hearing your grade, though. <laughs> oh. All right. What are you seeing now? Uh, neighborhood focus number one. OK. Great. OK. Thank you. I see Ria's joined us, too. So we'll, let, we'll give you a chance to. These are all friends here. So, um, so hopefully this will show. Um, neighborhood focus number one. So let's say you picked your city. Great. So now where in the city do you want to invest? And there's a way that you can actually look up. If you look up the address of your property, you can actually pull it in city data, you know, demographic data. Um, so you want to pick the neighborhood. So again, I do this for every single property I look at, whether it's a single family home, short term rental, small multifamily or an apartment. So um, or even a mixed mixed use is what we're looking at right now. Uh, so, you know, multifamily and commercial and, and retail. So, um, so median household income, um, you know, if you're looking at a cash flowing rental, you want it to make money. Um, and again, based on the source that I got it from, they, they say 40 to 70 might be a little bit higher. Um, if you're looking at an appreciation play, you want something that's a little bit higher than that, 55 to 90. And the reason why is that if you, if you go for areas where the household income is higher statistically, um, I mean, it's favorable, you know, they can support it, um, but generally they, 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 they are talking about properties that will not necessarily cash flow as much. So um, your cash flowing rentals, you know, workforce housing, um, you know, your B or C class, you're, you're more likely to cash flow. Um, but if you're looking at something to, that would appreciate, uh, then um, a little bit of a higher, uh, higher median household income. That's cool. Let's see. Is it, did it switch slides? For some reason it's not. There we go. Um, so in terms of the median rent in the area, Again, if you're looking at cash flowing rentals, you know, the sweet spot's about $800 to $1,200 per month. Um, and again, I like, you know, Gonzalo and Ty, they can probably weigh in. Um, if you're looking at a, um, you know, a, at a property that's strictly for appreciation and you're not looking at cash flow, you're not gonna, you're gonna get less cash flow, but you know, you want something that's a little bit higher than that. Um, in terms of the unemployment rate, um, what you want to do is look up what the unemployment rate is of the city that that you're in and make sure that that particular block um, has less than two and a half percent more than the city unemployment rate, because then you're going to be dealing with uh, more delinquencies and, uh, um, you know, issues like that. Or, or, or lack of ability for tenants to, to kind of pay. So, so Charlotte's, you know, unemployment rate, at least of 422 was 3.8%. Um, although I don't know if the city data, how updated it is, um, you know, you kind of want to look for something that's not too far off from that, from that amount. And then the poverty rate, you know, I think you ideally you want to stay uh, below 20 percent. Uh, absolute. But, you know, if you really want to mitigate risk, you want something that's uh, less than 15 percent. So um, and then, you know, just kind of showing what the poverty rates across the United States is. 
um, in terms of uh, gross numbers of people in all, you know, in terms of percentage rates. Um, you know, again, this is a little bit older, you know, probably about 2019, um, but uh, you, basically you don't want that particular property in the neighborhood that you're in to have a poverty rate that's uh, greater, much greater, um, you know, greater than 20%. 20 um, and again, again, this is from the source that I got it from, um, but, you know, he, used, he says ethnic diversity um, and you get that information, you know, Hispanics or um, whites, blacks, all that stuff. And, and the reason, and it's kind of controversial, um, but, you know, if, I think the idea is that if you've got multiple ethnicities, especially if you're dealing with workforce housing in a city that's got a uh, diverse, um, you know, workforce um, and ethnic makeup, uh, then you want that, you know, you want it to be uh, open to a different cross section of population, you know, you don't want something that's, um, so you, what you're looking for is that one, not one population is dominating more than 75% of that neighborhood. Um, so then, um, so then, you know, it just widens your market, you know, so, um, so that's the rationale behind that. So let's kind of take those criteria and apply it to, um, to this city and to a property that was recently on the market just down the street from here. Um, so that's the picture of the property here. It's actually just right off of, just right over there. Um, so I use, this, I use this neighborhood as an example. So, um, so again, 20, 2000 to 2019, you know, you're, it definitely meets the threshold, population growth, you want greater than 20%, we're 63.8%, great, check. Median income growth um, for the city, um, that should be greater than 30%, not less than 30%. So we're 36 point, 36%, medium home value growth, um, 95%. You want it greater than 40%. Again, we don't know what the crime index, at least by city data's uh, criteria are. So looking at this property in question, you know, again, um, I took that neighborhood and city data uh, and the median household income is 40 to 70. The criteria is 40 to 70. So in this case, it's uh, 61,000 check, median rent 800 to 1200 a month um, check. It's actually, this, this particular property was actually across the street from one, one I, lived in, I lived in 20 years ago when I was a resident. Um, and this, this neighborhood over there, I mean, it's a kind of a B neighborhood, but it was definitely a C at the time I stayed there. Um, I had my car broken into, I was hearing, you know, I was listening to, um, I heard domestic dispute in the apartment next door, um, you know, cars, would, you know, things like that. Um, but I was a poor resident. I was, you know, I wanted rent that was pretty cheap. It was only, I think it was like 400, $450 a month, 20 years ago. That same apartment is now going for 16, 17, $1,800 a month. Yeah. So um, literally just down the street over there. So, um, so, but now the neighborhood's definitely taken off. So uh, unemployment, less than 2.5% more than the city. Um, Charlotte's 3.8. You can see the unemployment in this one is 2.29. So great. Poverty rate less than 20%. Um, so the poverty rate in this case, you know, 12.8%. Um, so, the, you know, this, this, and then ethnic diversity, you can see, um, you know, pretty much uh, there is not multi race, that's even better. Um, and, you know, it's not more than one, per, you know, 75% uh, dominated by one ethnicity. So, so this property just down the street from here kind of meets all the criteria. So, you know, just in terms of ending the educational portion and certainly again, you know, love to do like a Q and A um, or, you know, all of you, you folks can kind of weigh in um, or even the people that are online, uh, you know, city foci, you want look at population growth, median household income growth, median house condo value growth, change in crime levels, make sure it's trending down. Um, neighborhood foci, you know, you definitely want a median household income, at least if it's cash flowing 40 to 70, contract rent 800 to 1200, although that's probably rising at the rate uh, rents are going up in most markets. Unemployment rate less than 2.5% greater than the city unemployment rate. Poverty rate uh, less than 20%, ideally less than 15%. And ethnic diversity just kind of open the market, makes it more uh, available to different types of tenants. So um, last thing kind of want to plug a little bit about us and a number of you I think are probably already on this list but if you're not here's the QR code to kind of get it get on our email list certainly I think for the folks that are here will um, I think I'll send up I'll send a follow-up email just to disseminate everybody's um, you know uh, email contact info 
um, just to kind of share. Now, um, our mentor, one of our mentor in terms of apartment investing is uh, a guy in my, by the name of Brad Sumrock. A number of you are part of the group that I see on the, on the call. But for those of you that are not, he sponsors this meetup. Um, so this is like the kind of local chapter of this meetup. He does have an event coming up May 13th to 15th. Um, uh, it's very comprehensive, very information intensive. Um, you know, certainly show the QR code. Uh, to join virtually, it's pretty much a nominal fee. Uh, to do it, you can get the QR code or I can provide it. I'll let you take the photo there. Um, Dallas, yeah. Yeah, Dallas and, and even even the, I think even live, it's a pretty um, reasonable price, um, you know, but, uh, you know, some, some good information there. Three days, three intensive days of teaching uh, apartment investing. Again, you know, he, he is the sponsor of this meetup group. So, uh, so I just kind of want to, you know, let you, you know, let you know about, about this opportunity. So last thing, you know, I think in terms of uh, multifamily and apartment investing, and I, you know, those of you that were on the call last time, um, you know, we've, we've kind of moved from our small multifamily properties, which we are going to keep and they're doing great. Um, but, you know, we've since uh, passively invested in a number of uh, a larger apartments as a limited partner. Um, we're actively working with our partners to acquire um, some on the general partner side. But, you know, this is an asset in Atlanta. This is a development deal in, in Durham. And this is one in Houston, close to where Dr. Riggard is sitting right now. Um, so, um, so, but you know, there's, there are ways that you can do it. Um, you know, again, um, you know, we're happy. There's a number of uh, experienced folks here that can also answer those calls. And I think in order to do that, you know, just kind of frees me up to uh, kind of do the things that matter, enjoy my work a little bit more, but also spend more time with, uh, with my wife um, and just kind of give us that variety rather than uh, doing the, uh, you know, uh, eating. You can eat your sushi along with your, uh, prime rib every day. So, so uh, again, you know, anybody wants to meet with us or anybody wants to connect with anybody here, those of you that are on Zoom, you know, do exchange emails and I'll make sure that the emails are available to everybody. Um, so just, you can reach out. Yeah. Actually, you know what, let me move the mic over here to you. I'll give you the mic. Gonzalo, by the way. Check, check. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Great. Uh, yeah. So, a kind of rule of thumb that we use is um, uh, medium ho uh, household income. So, we, we first kind of see the area, what the medium household income is in the area. And if our property is within a certain uh, area, we like to, to say a rule like three to four times the rent is your, is the income of the area. So for our apartments is it's around a thousand dollars a month is what we charge. So we're, we're targeting to make sure we, before we bought the property, we target to make sure that area that people were making within 36,000 to $48,000 per year in that kind of district. So they can kind of afford, you know, to live in those places. So that's kind of like a very high level, like rule of thumb that you can uh, take a look at when you're kind of like evaluating properties three to four times. Everybody get that? Right, you want to add some? In places like Louisville, you got to worry about those things. Yeah. <laughs> Poor attempt at a joke. Apologize. Um, the other, the other, um, <laughs> the other um, thing that I might make mention of uh, is the COVID migration that's been taking place. Um, a lot of inflated rents just because people are like. I want to get the heck out of where I am to where it's better and all that stuff. And I believe that some places we got to be careful on some things there. So, I mean, I'll, I, I don't want to expand too much on that, but I, I think that uh, Florida is, is going to have some, some problems in a few years uh, with some of that. And, um, and, and also, believe it or not, I think Texas is going to have a little problem with that in, in a few years. So we're going to see real, real strong appreciation, but then there's going to be a point where things are going to change and it's going to be very interesting to watch that. But that's why I've been focusing on uh, the Charlotte uh, MSA, because there is a lot of strong employment. And uh, I, I don't know if you guys know, but Charlotte is the number eight international investment, real estate investment uh, focus. Um, so investors all over the place are looking at putting 
uh, money into Charlotte. And uh, a lot of it's going to be stemmed from the banking, uh, you know, being the number two um, banking metro in the U.S., um, just FYI. So those guys are really, 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 really smart. The, the ones that are doing like the big high rise type stuff. Uh, so I tend to try to like look at what those guys are doing and follow that. So, um, you know, you just need to get in the way of some of those things and uh, accidentally do pretty well. So that's my two cents on on that part. All right, what questions do we have either from the Zoom chat or, or live? Questions, comments? Rhea, how you doing? We missed Thanks. you this past weekend. Thank you, Joel, for the uh, invites. It's great to be well, here. And, and tell, tell us a little bit about yourself, Rhea. Um, I'm a family medicine physician and I read a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which inspired me to get out of the e-employee to become a small business. So currently my husband and I have over 70 apartment units. And that's this is, from- This is by themselves. This is not, not syndicated, 70 units. So that's just from reading a book which transformed our lives. So now, um, because of COVID, I appreciated what I did in 2012, when I, 2014, when I laid down my white coat and transitioned fully into apartment investing, because now we're able to give back to our community here locally and give back uh, internationally. So we have two scholars right now, and we could not have done it without apartment investing. So she's since retired from medicine. I know her husband's a radiologist, but uh, um, and she's recently been a GP on a deal in Tampa. So, yeah. Oh, her. Well, where, where, what's the city that you're in? So she's got a bunch of um, small multifamily in Pennsylvania. Yeah, yeah, seven, seven T. It is seven T. Single family. What, what's the size of those, uh, Ria? So we have several combination of two unit, three unit, four unit. Our biggest one is six unit and single family homes. So we have over 20 um, buildings with a combination of two, three, four, and six and singles. Now, now she's found a niche because of um, the market she's in. It's mostly catering to docks and it's a small city in Pennsylvania. Which city is it? At Danville, Pennsylvania. We're population 5,000, so I know if I can do it in a small rural area, you guys in our, are in a bigger city. You can do it 10 times of what I'm doing here. But she's also on a GP team uh, for a um, larger, um, what is it, 100 and low hundreds unit in uh, Tampa, right? Yes, 135 apartment units where my friends, coworkers, colleagues invested our money into this 135 apartment units in Tampa, Florida. So to give context, we bought this in February for 178,000 per door. Now we wanted to buy another 135 apartment units 10 minutes just away from this property. Now at this Point price point in time that 135 apartment units 1960 build and we still have to do value add that's already 230,000 230 and we bought the 135 in February for 178,000 so if we want February to of this year yes February of this year so if we want to cash out now I mean we have to pay the capital gains but we're not doing but what I'm saying is if we want to um, sell it now, we can sell it for a tune of 230000 per unit. This is even before the value add and raising why, rents. Why not cash out refi? So that's the question is why not cash out refi? So we're not cashing out refi because we still have to do our business plan. When you buy this property, there's a value add component to it. So in order for us to raise the rents, not only organically, so right now, even if we don't do anything organically, we are getting $100, $150 per unit of rent, but we are not stopping there. So we're going to do our magic into the property. What's the magic? Inside and outside. 
outside is we're gonna improve the fencing. Right now it's all ruggedy wooden fence. So we're gonna update those fence. We're changing the facade of the property. It's a long line um, of apartment buildings in Tampa, Florida. So what we need to do is put new signage, oasis at Ballast Point with highlights, you know, lighting outside. We're changing the, the exterior close to the pool. We're putting in park, dog parks, family park. And then we're also doing our magic to the unit. So there are a several classic. Classic means they've been the way they were when they were built in 1970. So we're changing the carpet to luxury vinyl floor planking. We're changing it to um, new paints. We're changing it to granite countertop and stainless steel appliances. So by just doing that, a one bedroom apartment can rent easily for 13, 1400. So we get more money at today's market when we do our magic outside and inside. So we won't refinance now until we do our magic and increase the rent organically and doing our value add into the property. Required, uh, depending on what kind of loan she has, may be required to do that for a certain period of time. Otherwise, there's going to be prepayment penalties and some things that would not make that worth it. So, um, yeah. That's awesome. Good awesome. Job. Good job. What other questions do we have? Um, I'm trying to figure out how to work this dynamic here, but uh, thanks, thanks for that. Any comments, questions? Dr. Nupanis, I would like to know for us and like for me and Haley, the people, if they can recall kind of the first steps that they took and their first entry point said, I'm ready now to step into this because as an early career person that always feels like, feels out of reach financially and at what stage is realistic uh, to start thinking about these types of investments. Okay, so the question is, and I can kind of give a little context. So uh, Dr. Rigert there is, what are you now, two years since finishing residency? So. Um, and the Dr. Vatcher's like currently, you know, she still has one more year with me. So they're not, they wouldn't quite meet what we call the accredited investor status, nor, um, you know, when you're early in your career, you have less, less to invest. So um, maybe I'll pose it, pose it to some of the people on here. What, what would, what would be your, at least to our experienced folks, what's your best thing to kind of get started for these, for these young docs? Sure. So usually, in, in my humble opinion, uh, you're either going to have capital to invest. Um, if you're not accredited yet, that's fine. You can look for a 506B, which is a sophisticated and accredited. We are actually working on one right now here in Charlotte um, ourselves. So they're available. Uh, the other capital, and you still want to make effort, is to hook up with a general partner group. Um, the easiest way, in my opinion, to be able to get involved with uh, a general partnership group that's out syndicating apartment buildings is to raise capital. I firmly believe that building relationships your easiest to bring value to a team. Apartment syndication is a team sport. Um, you're not gonna be able to go out there and do anything significant on your own at first. Later on, you know, it's a different story, but, uh, but you got to hook up with the right um, team, in my humble opinion, and bring value to that team. Great, and I wanted, sure. I wanted to add that as a highlight and a response to, especially as Dr. Napanius has been such a key mentor. And uh, I think that's where I met Rhea in our community setting where you do join with people on their team. So I, I certainly uh, value that input. Thank you very much. Yep, Gonzalo. Yeah, I have a little bit of a different story. So I've only been pretty much doing this for probably the last three or four years. The first, uh, yeah, real estate syndication in general. Um, before that, it was a corporate life, you know, a company and all that stuff. But uh, in the beginning, I started small, and that's kind of how I met my partner in the beginning. We did just two dupl uh, duplexes and triplexes where we lived up in uh, New York. And we kind of started getting, doing that, you know, buying those at like 200, 220,000 and really starting to like understand the whole loan side of things, renovations, contractors, how, how the whole thing gets put together. And then from that experience, 
uh, my partner and I started and then uh, educating ourselves on, uh, you know, attending these kind of uh, events, going to conferences, meeting other operators, learning how the whole entire process. And in the, in the whole time, we built our database of, of, of uh, you know, people that we're looking to invest, we're looking to learn, we build our brand. So it was kind of like a long process for us. And, and eventually that kind of turned out to last year, we closed on our first like true syndication after, you know, two years of kind of like doing this. So for us, it was like a hard, hard, hard work. And then finally, you know, it kind of paid off. But uh, we started small in the beginning. Thanks, guys. Any other questions, comments? Ria, Federico, anyone? So I think what I'll do is, um, I know for all of you that are online, um, you know, you can, you know, we'll, we'll probably sign off, but if you guys want to stay online um, and kind of talk amongst each other, that's, that's always an option. What is trying to get a vote? You know, does anybody want to stay online and talk amongst the folks that are there? We do have some really experienced folks that are there. Um, um, and I see uh, Brandon and Alyssa are joining us also. What I might do is I might keep the online chat going. You can all talk amongst our, yourselves. Um, while us over here are going to um, kind of talk amongst ourselves, unless any, um, but any, any last comments or questions? So hopefully we're, I think we're going to do it all online next month, but appreciate you all that, that I'm going to hit stop for the recording.